Hey y'all, Derek Fox here. Um, I am a spiritual seeker, if I can kind of boil it down for you. What does that mean? That means the universe talks and I absolutely listen. I listen with the focus and the goal of reaching my highest vibration, but most importantly, learning universal secrets, right? About the power, the, the secrets that I just said, and the connectedness of the universe. Now, this isn't something that's lost. People have it, civilizations have slash had it, right? But what happens is due to the negativity of others, due to their fear, due to their comfort of staying in the shadows, those people get ostracized. Those civilizations, they get destroyed, they get their uh, histories rewritten, right? But that information is there. We just have to find it. That's exactly what I see. I'm super passionate about this in my personal life and I'm viewing this as a great opportunity for my personal life and professional life to just align in a way that it's never done before. Now, how does it manifest in my personal life? Well, I routinely go to abandoned places or go to ancient ruins. Well, not so much ancient ruins, uh, but ruins in general um, of places that have fallen into disrepair. AtlasObscura.com is a great place to look. But I, Or I'll just go jump on my kayak or put my paddleboard in the water and go down the river and see what I can find. Or just jump into a lake or go to places where essentially no one is, where civilization is not. Because civilization isn't there does not mean we are not there, does not mean the knowledge is not there. And we're always looking for traces of humans. But if we're trying to find true knowledge, do we really believe that humans are the only ones that are in the possession of this true knowledge? And do we think that we're only going to find it in the way that our human eyes are trained to see it? I don't think so. So we need to get away from civilization because we have to get away from that closed-minded thought process, open up our own minds so we can see it for what it is, not what we expect it to be. Whew. Survival skills in line. I kind of made a little list right over here. Um, I used to do a whole bunch of camping. There was one summer where I needed to make a little bit of extra money, so I rented my place out for Airbnb, but I still needed somewhere to sleep. So literally half the summer, because uh, I also used to be a history teacher as well, which has fed my need for more knowledge, right? And historical situations like uh, the Old West, but most importantly, ancient civilizations. Oh my God, literally obsessed, obsessed, love them so much. Um, Survival skills. See, that's why. That's why I well have made the notes right here. Okay. All right. Uh so I did do a whole bunch of camping. So basic survival skills as far as pitching a tent, making a fire, feeding myself. I didn't say go ahead and like strangle a bear and cook myself some bear. I said feed myself off a prepared meal that I had when I got there. But I mean, a brother can cook some stuff if you kill it first. But I do know how to shoot a bow and arrow as well. So yes, and I could do a little bit of hunting. Like I've never done serious hunting, but I do have general knowledge of how to shoot a bow and arrow. I don't know where animals be at, you know, by the water because they get thirsty too. And yeah, you know what I'm saying? I can be quiet and just do what we got to do to feed ourselves for sure, for sure. Um, I have shot a crossbow as well. Um, fishing is something that I do have a lot of experience with. Well, not, yeah, I say a decent amount of experience with. Um, I can swim, kayak, paddleboard. I do absolutely love the outdoors. I do love rocks. I do love crystals. I mean, love the outdoors. I do an abundant amount of hiking. I do a lot of research in places where we can hike in the woods and um, combine that with some type of paddleboarding or actually paddleboard first and then hike in the woods to see what we can find. Thrill of the chase? Hold on, did you say something new? Yes, um, I have ADHD, so yes. Something novel, something new, thrill of chase, 100%, I'm your dude. Stunts, okay, every summer, because I used to be afraid of heights, um, I stopped being afraid of heights because I kept jumping off cliffs that get progressively higher. So every summer before I start the summer, what I do is I'll go to uh, the Beckett Quarry and I'll go cliff jumping. My highest so far is about 80 feet. So yeah, those are things that I like to do. That kind of segues into stunts. Absolutely, I don't, I'm not like a stunt man or anything, but I'm very, very physical, I'm very athletic, I'm strong, I'm open-minded to certain stunts. And as long as we can do it in a way that doesn't, you know, put me in the hospital, yeah, let's go, 100%. And I am an absolutely quick learner. So if there are any skills, stunts, or things that I do need to learn, I'm very good at learning on the fly. Absolutely. Seeking the truth, for sure. This is one big reason why I ended up becoming a history teacher because I had such an abundant knowledge of history, although I was a business major, that when I had to take the test to become a history teacher, I didn't actually have to study any new history or anything that I didn't know because I had an abundant amount. And that is trying to seek the truth. It was looking at these ancient civilizations and see what they knew that we have lost or maybe we did not know, such as the Egyptians being able to uh, move those big blocks. We try to think of all these theories as to how they could have moved build those blocks but now some theories are coming out that make more sense to me like they have a uh, they had a, uh, a greater understanding of some type of technology that we don't currently use as a civilization such as how sound and the vibration of sound can help move blocks like <laughs> that's what I'm talking about extreme conditions <laughs> marriage poverty being black in America 
living in a capitalist society, being me in a civilization where everyone expects you to be normal. Like, first of all, what is normal? But extreme environments, I haven't been in the desert, but I've been on some really hot beaches. I haven't been like in Antarctica, but I was born in Massachusetts. You already know it's cold out here. Western Mass too, we're in the mountains, bro. It's cold out here, I'm trying to tell you. But do not be discouraged. I do not have an aversion for anything but cold. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like the cold. <laughs> But any other circumstances, we're down. Like, we could be really hot, really wet. Like, bring it on. Let's, let's do it. Because if we're going to be in the cold, give a, give a brother a coat. Yeah, maybe a hat, gloves, maybe a scarf. Oh, just, 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 you know, we don't got to go in the cold. I mean, thank you so much if you all are still here. This is super exciting opportunity, and I would love, absolutely love to be a part of it. And I will give you my full, absolute sauce every day, every second. Thank you so much. Like, if you call me and tell me, this is what I'm going to do. You could be on Zoom if you need to. Ah!